Now, the rest of the story. Jackie Jean stared up into the bright light above the operating table, and it seemed to consume her. A simple procedure, the doctor had called it. A little dilation, a little scraping, and good as new in no time. Of course, back home in Arkansas, they'd had another name for it. They called it an abortion. In that lightning-fast way your mind works when it's scared, Jackie Jean's rewound and replayed every mistake that had led her to this rotten place. It had been a mistake, for instance, letting herself be born to parents so young, a 15-year young mother and a 17-year young alcoholic father. It had been a mistake letting her parents separate when she was only six, then letting her dad take her hitchhiking across the country. It had been a mistake singing in bars for nickels, the age of seven, and just because Dad told her to, and then sleeping in Salvation Army shelters because he couldn't or wouldn't go to work. It had been a mistake winding up on welfare in the slums of Los Angeles and then helping subsidize her father's bad habits by hawking greeting cards on the street. It had been a mistake hiring herself out as a maid at 13 and then letting herself envy the wealthy family that she worked for. But the biggest mistake of all was a no-good named John Sarkeesian. Jackie Jean was 18 when she met him at a donut shop in Fresno. He was so handsome, so exotic, so fascinating. So she married him and found out that he also was a bum, a lazy, alcoholic bum like her father, also a heavy gambler and a bit of a brute. No sooner were they married than Jackie Jean wanted out. John begged her, give me three months. She gave him three months, after which she still wanted a divorce. Only now she was pregnant. John had never earned enough money to support the two of them. He could scarcely be counted upon to support three. So now lying there on the abortionist's table, staring up into that awful overhead light, Jackie Jean wondered how she could have made so many terrible, terrible mistakes, or why she should now seek to erase them all by making one more mistake. Are you ready? the doctor asked in a cool, calm voice. No, Jackie Jean answered, I am not. And with that she got up off the table and put on her clothing and walked out the door. If she could... She would go home and make her marriage work. If she couldn't, she would have her baby anyway. And the two would do it somehow. Either way, the odds were against her. Jostled in and out of 17 different schools, Jackie Jean, still 18, had not even managed a high school diploma. But she could sing for nickels if she had to. At least her dad had taught her that. And so she did. For once upon a string of mostly unavoidable mistakes, there was a teenager from Kensett, Arkansas who suddenly started doing things right, like May 20, 1946, when she gave birth to a daughter named Sherilyn, a little girl who had come within moments of being lost to an abortionist's knife, a child with no chance, whom the world now knows simply as Cher. That name is now in lights. C-H-E-R. Cher. Only now you know the rest of the story. And now the rest of the rest of the story. Just think if Jackie Jean had gone ahead with the abortion. Think of the immense talent the world would never have known. Think of all the wonderful music that never would have been made. Cher is the only person in history to have a number one single in each of the past six decades, beginning with I Got You Babe in 1965, and most recently, DJ Play a Christmas Song in 2023. Sherilyn Sarkeesian was born on May 20th, 1946. Mr. Harvey explained that her father rarely had enough money to take care of himself and his wife, much less a family of three. Now let's take a closer look at her father. John Paul Sarkeesian was born in Berkeley, California in 1926. His friends called him Johnny. Well, Johnny attended a high school called Fresno Technical School. In 1942, in the midst of World War II, Fresno Technical School partnered with local police and created a student police group. 
The idea was for students policing students in activities such as air raid practice drills, fire drills, and athletic events. The student police only had jurisdiction over fellow students and under certain circumstances. The only exception was that during fire drills or air raid drills, student police had the authority to stop traffic so students could cross the road safely. Johnny was among the first 12 students to join the student police group. Rather than a badge, members of the student police wore a blue felt armband with a white seven-pointed star bearing the words, Student Police. This is Johnny receiving his student police armband. In September 1945, Johnny was charged with theft. Johnny had been discharged from the Coast Guard in the summer of 1944, and, according to Johnny, he lost his sea bag before he arrived home. After he returned home, a sea bag with his last name on it arrived at his home. He noticed that some of the clothing didn't fit, but Johnny assumed it was because he'd gained some weight. Johnny gave some of the items of clothing away that didn't fit anymore. In September 1945, Johnny was charged with petty theft. You see, the sea bag that Johnny received belonged to Coast Guardsman Benjamin Sarkisian, no relation. In the following month, Johnny, who was listed as a truck operator, was convicted of theft of the sea bag and sentenced to 30 days in jail and a 90-day suspended sentence. The reason for the conviction was that Johnny admitted that he failed to return the remaining contents of the sea bag after he learned that they belonged to Benjamin Sarkisian. Now, in the following year, 1946, Johnny met Jackie Jean Crouch. Jackie was born in Kinsett, Arkansas in 1926. Early on, Jackie's father recognized that Jackie had singing talent. When she was just seven years old, Jackie began singing on local radio in Arkansas. When she was 10 years old, she sang with Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys. Wow. In 1938, 12-year-old Jackie won a statewide talent contest. Now, to give Jackie a better chance than she would have had in Arkansas, her father moved them to Los Angeles, California, where Jackie enrolled in drama school. I was born Jackie Jean Crouch, she said, and I thought it was a cute name until I came to California and they called me a dumb Okie. Tiring of the snide comments, Jackie adopted the stage name Georgia Pelham to honor a deceased friend. On June 22, 1945, Jackie married Johnny in Reno, Nevada. Both were 19 years old. Some sources say that they broke up the following day, then got back together, then broke up again in what was a pattern for their relationship. Sherilyn Cher Sarkisian was born on May 20, 1946. Jackie decided on the name Sherilyn for Cher because Lana Turner, her idol, had named her daughter Cheryl. Jackie and Johnny's relationship ended for good soon after Cher was born. Jackie said later, I worked in an all-night diner from 7 at night until 7 in the morning for $3. Then I got a singing job in a bar and grill, a real dump, but in 1946 it paid $75 a week, and that was a lot. In August 1947, a year after Cher was born, Jackie, then a 21-year-old divorcee, was among the 32 entrants in the Jambo Rena beauty contest held in Reno, Nevada. Out of the 32 contestants, Hollywood beauty contest specialist Earl Carroll crowned Jackie the winner of the contest and presented her with a $750 cash prize. Jackie then got several acting jobs and television commercials. In the following year, 1948, Jackie, using the stage name Georgia Pelham, appeared in a stage production of Macbeth. Take a look at this photo taken in January of 1949. Georgia is on the far left in this photo. Standing beside her is the actor Jack Carson, who received top billing in Romance on the High Seas, a film which also starred one of my favorites, Doris Day. He received second billing behind Cary Grant on Frank Capra's Arsenic and Old Lace. He starred in over 130 productions from the 1930s to the 1960s. You see, Jack Carson began his acting career by studying with Ben Bard. To show his appreciation, Jack Carson sponsored scholarship awards for up-and-coming actors and actresses who wanted to study under Ben Bard. In 1949, Georgia was one of the three winners of the Jack Carson Scholarship. 
In April 1949, 15 candidates, including Georgia Pelham, entered the 8th annual Los Angeles Holiday on Wings Beauty Contest. Judges included actress Marie McDonald, singers Clark Dennis and Kay Starr, MGM talent scout Al Treskany, and dance director Edwin Gale. As you may have guessed, Georgia won the competition. She was crowned by junior chamber president Glenn Martineau and actress Marie McDonald. One of my favorite Marie McDonald films is Living in a Big Way, co-starring Gene Kelly. If you haven't seen it, it's a good one. In 1950, Georgia auditioned for a part in the John Huston film, The Asphalt Jungle. Now, Georgia charmed her way through the audition and got the part. Well, that's what they told her anyway. Georgia learned later on that another newcomer got the part. Like Georgia, whose real middle name was Jean, the part went to another actress whose real middle name was Jean, Norma Jean Baker, you know, Marilyn Monroe. Georgia wasn't totally discouraged. In that same year, Georgia appeared in her first film, A Life of Her Own. By 1952, she had had small, uncredited roles in five films. In 1955, she appeared in an episode of The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. She appeared in the I Love Lucy episode, Lucy Gets a Paris Gown. Georgia played one of the models. She acted in several other small roles, but she just never broke through in Hollywood. In 1962, 16-year-old Cher dropped out of high school and left home. Cher had wanted to be famous since childhood, but she felt that she was unattractive and untalented. Can you imagine that? Cher said later, I couldn't think of anything that I could do. I didn't think I'd be a singer or dancer. I just thought, well, I'll be famous. That was my goal. After leaving home, Cher danced in a small club on Hollywood's Sunset Strip and took acting classes. She introduced herself to anyone so she could possibly get a break. In November of that year, she got a big break and became a housekeeper. She became the housekeeper for Sonny Bono. I'm Brad Dyson. Thanks for watching. And now you know the rest of the rest of the story. You guys want to see my mother and sister? Yeah. Goodbye. This is my mother, Georgia, and this is my Hi. sister, Georgiana. Oh. <laughs>